Hello everyone. In this video I want to talk about the new iteration of the nonlinear sequencer. Um, the nonlinear sequencer is a set of objects uh, that I launched uh, a couple of years ago and they now exist as a package in uh, Max 8. And this is a new release where I added a few objects and implemented um, different techniques for this idea of nonlinear sequencing. So um, there is a previous video that uh, it's uh, on my channel about the first release of the nonlinear sequencer. And this one will explore what's new in the new one, in the new release. And I'm going to uh, also go over some of the basics of, uh, of the whole package. So um, this will be, it's already on in, in, the, Mac, in the Max 8 uh, package manager but it will also be released in uh, in VCV. Uh, and so if you happen to be a user of VCV rack, these objects will also be present in in that environment. Okay, let's start with um, looking at uh, the general description of the nonlinear sequencer, in particular, the release of the 2.0 um, version. So uh, in general, the nonlinear sequencer is a package for rhythmic generation. And all of the objects are always use a master tempo. Another characteristic of this package is that it also generates uh, control data that is used uh, in the generation of the pattern. So for each one of the different sequencers, uh, there is going to be some control data that it's been output that it's organic to the uh, pattern generation. In this package, there is no use of uh, randomness or noise. It's uh, all of the behavior of the sequencers are based on deterministic uh, processes. Uh, and so it, once the parameters are set to a certain um, to certain values, the output will always be replicated in the same way. And also another idea that I've been trying to develop is the morphing and the interpolation of different patterns. And so with these techniques, you can actually uh, create smoothness in transitioning between different patterns. Everything in the nonlinear sequencer uh, happens in a signal rate. So uh, it can be the, the outputs of these objects can be uh, plugged into um, control, uh, voltage control objects that can be manipulated without going through the scheduler of max. So it's everything happens on signal at signal rate. It's an interesting package for those who are uh, we have a workflow based on uh, generation of material and then parsing through material uh, and saving, recalling different patterns. So it's a way of generating a lot of output and then selecting uh, whatever uh, seems to be uh, valuable. For now, like the full implementation is only max. VCV rack will have only the new objects that I added in the in the second release of the nonlinear sequencer. So the cross sequencers, as you will see soon. And the VST are actually pretty easy to implement now with Rainbow in Max. So I actually already compiled a few VSTs. I haven't released them yet, but it's something that can be done pretty easily. The cross sequencers are the newest addition and uh, cross sequencers are um, it's a pretty simple idea of uh, having two or more LFOs and detecting when these LFOs intersect and generating triggers whenever this intersection happens. And in particular, I have two cross sequencers, the cross sequencers two and the cross sequencer three, which means uh, two LFOs intersecting or three LFOs intersecting. Uh, and the two LFO intersecting are, um, will have only one trigger output because there is only uh, one combination of LFOs that will produce a trigger. 
With the three LFOs, we actually have a lot more because we have the combination of the first and the second, the first and the third, the second and the third, and then one, two, and three, meaning when all of them uh, intersect, then we'll have a trigger. The last one might not actually happen at all if there is no um, periodic relationship between the LFOs. This is the cross sequencer two, uh, what it looks like in practice, where I have two different LFOs. This one is a triangular wave and this one is a sine wave. And whenever these two intersect, then I have a trigger. This case is a triangular wave and a sawtooth. And you can see here already I have a different pattern with three intersection close by. Not only have the two um, LFOs, but I have here a value, the red line, which is actually the difference between the two within the between the two LFOs. So I find the difference of the two LFOs to be an interesting uh, control data to use. Of course, whenever the different, whenever I have a trigger, the different will be zero. So this is an example of uh, cross sequence of three. And uh, in this case, I have the blue square wave, a triangular wave and a sine wave. What are the parameters that can be controlled in, in the, in the cross sequencers? Well, I have all of the LFO parameters, so the frequency um, and the frequencies are controlled, are given as a rate to the master clock uh, frequency, frequency. And then I have a waveform, which is interpolatable, which means that I actually can transition between waveforms smoothly. Uh, the amplitude the phase, of course, and the duty cycle, which is only for rectangular and triangular wave. So the outputs of this are triggers, of course, whenever there is an intersection. Then I have the difference, which is what I showed before, the difference between the two LFOs. Um, in the case of the cross sequencer three, I also have the total difference of the three LFOs and then the LFOs themselves. So this is my uh, cross sequencer two with uh, the first, second output would be the LFO as the uh, comment suggests. Uh, the second one will be the second LFO and the third one will be the difference, which in this case is zero because it's uh, the whole, uh, both, both um, LFOs are frequency one. So it's, it's enough to change some uh the rate of one to get a different different uh difference and the last one will be the ramp of the of the general of the master uh clock so um these will be the triggers the first output is the triggers of the two so i created a few snippets here that can help navigate this package. So if I start typing NLS, I can have, for instance, a scope two for to visualize the the um, the cross sequencer two. So let's leave the let's leave the difference alone for now. So if I change, for instance, the waveform of the first one. I will have an interpolation and you can see the blue waveform it's becoming a triangular waveform so one would be triangle two would be uh, square and three will be sawtooth right uh, I can actually change for instance the um, the duty cycle of the triangle or of the square and the last the orange uh, scope will give me the difference between the two LFOs so I can start mapping these to some um, I can start mapping these to some um, musical value 
by uh, just using the uh, NLS AR attack release, uh, which is a simple object that just uh, takes a time in milliseconds here and a um, and an attack shape. Uh, so if I put this to say 120, 130. All right, so. What I can do is change the rate of one. So now it's it's zero. If I put it to zero point five, and given that the rate of two is one, I will have a kind of simple periodic pattern, right? Because these are in an integer relation. Um, same for this. Of course, if I start going into the decimal territory, I will have longer pattern and even like sort of like non periodic patterns. Changing the waveform will change the behavior of the pattern and changing it gradually will change the pattern gradually. All right, so uh, we, we can actually use these parameters to map uh, to map uh, this uh, control data to create some musical parameters. So uh, we can, for instance, scale uh, the minus one to one bipolar LFOs to some uh, um, uh, MIDI value here. So I can use this as my pitch. Uh, and I can, for instance, um, if I want just want one value instead of continuous glissando effect I can uh, do a sample and hold uh, using the trigger right so again this is a non repeating pattern etc etc uh, of course if I want this to be a tempered um, yes to facilitate the use of these objects I've created a um, B patchers that are ready to use in the snippets again if you type in NLS you will have the cross sec 2 snippet uh, and this will uh, will give you this nice interface where you can manipulate all of the parameters um, in a easier to use UI. Uh, also, this one will take inputs and in the different, in the L file and in the examples, you will see ways of manipulating these parameters as inputs in real time. Um,
also use another object that I created is called um, NLS uh, trigger logic. Trigger, trigger logic uh, object is just parsing through different um, different triggers and checking for um, the behavior of the two the two uh, rightmost uh, inlets. So if I have um, a two signals, I can check whether uh, these signals are above or below zero or equals to zero uh, in both cases. And I can check with an AND or an OR uh, logical operator. And these more than zero, or less than zero, or equals to zero ref can refer to either direction or sign. So whether the LFO is in the positive um, range or in the negative or whether the direction is ascending or descending. So um, these are different ways of kind of parsing out different, um, when I have too many triggers, let's say, and I just want to select some, I can select them using the behavior of the two LFOs or of the different as a uh, check. This is also available as a B patcher so that's uh, helpful to kind of have a user-friendly version of it. And the last object I want to talk about today is the uh, Cross Sequencer 3. The Cross Sequencer 3 also uh, exists as, a, as an external object uh, or as a B patcher. But it has three instead of two, um, instead of two LFOs. And I've created also an object here which is useful to visualize this uh, again in the snippets, uh, the scope three, it's called. And this will allow you to, uh, to uh, parse through the different visualizations. Let me know if you have any comments and if you have any questions about this new package, um, I would love to hear your feedback. And I think it's a useful tool for pattern generation and also to create uh, some uh, interesting musical mappings of these different uh, control voltage that are being output as a result of the pattern generation. Again, this will be available also in VCV Rack in case you're a user. Uh, and um, so thank you for watching. Until the next time, take care.